Can I hear because a reportable accident occurred on the 14th of October 2015 when the Greyston Bridge uh, collapsed. That, were, that is where uh, Marion Roberts, they were the principal contractors. And then as a result of, of that, certain uh, passengers in the vehicle died and certain of them were injured. Now, in terms of the Occupational Health and Safety Act, such an event must be reported and then subsequently an investigation and or an inquiry must be held. In this case, an inquiry was convened. Uh, it started uh, its proceedings in uh, about July 2016 and then for a period of approximately two years it continued. Uh, hearing the evidence of experts who were called on behalf of the scaffolding company, Formscaf, and also called on behalf of Marion Roberts. Uh, those proceedings, the evidence of the experts, took approximately 17 days. And today we resumed, and now we're hearing the evidence of the other witnesses. Well, first of all, the purpose of an inquiry is to determine the cause or causes of the accident and then to make a finding on the remedial measures to prevent such an occurrence. In this case, the Johannesburg Development Agency, they are the client and they contracted with Marion Roberts to build the pedestrian bridge. Now, of course, it's not only a question of compliance with contractual uh, obligations, but the JDA has got an obligation towards the public to ensure that whatever structures they arrange to be erected, that those structures are safe as far as reasonably practicable. For that reason, it's a great concern for the JDA. It is very important that a structure be uh, designed uh, and that the design be implemented and the design must take into account the uh, competence of all items which form part of the structure. So all equipment and sections which are installed. It doesn't help you merely to check the loading capacity of each and every item but not to bring the whole lot together. Then apart from that, Apart from the fact that the uh, design must be implemented, there must be also a correct sequence of implementation. You can't put the cart before the horses, otherwise it will collapse. Up to now, no sequencing plan has been produced. Yeah, the um, presiding inspector ask the witness uh, whether there was compliance with a particular uh, regulation of the construction regulations concerning the appointment of a person. The objection was that the witness was asked whether there was compliance with the, re the regulation. Then the objection was that you can't do that because legal uh, uh, compliance cannot be determined by the presiding person. And that by the, by, by the witness, but by the presiding person. But then the matter was resolved in that the question was rephrased and the presiding inspector then asked the witness whether there was factual compliance with the regulation. Well, tomorrow um, we're going to hear the testimony of Hein Pretorius an, appointment, uh, an appointee in terms of Section 16.2 of the Occupational Health and Safety Act, and then Mr. Oliver Artnesgaard. Artnesgaard was a site engineer and also involved with the temporary structure, and he was uh, on a day-to-day -day basis at the structure. The inspector that has set aside a period of three months four days a week for this, but we can finalize it sooner. I don't think next week, but perhaps the week thereafter. That's my assessment. Well, at the conclusion of all the testimony and the evidence, a finding must be made by the presiding inspector and also recommendations. That report is then sent to the chief inspector 
and the Chief Inspector may then lay down remedial measures. It's also in practice sent to the prosecuting authority who may decide then to institute a prosecution. It is a public document because these proceedings are public and in terms of the promotion of Administrative Justice Act, it should be made available to all the interested parties.